Yeah, we are here upstairs at the Fiber uh, during Dave's Leicester Comedy Festival, and we're lucky enough to be joined by writer, actor, comedian, filmmaker now. Yeah. Josie Long. Thank you. Hi, how are you, Josie? You alright? Um, yeah, I'm great, thank you. I'm really good, good yeah. So, um, the last time you were in Leicester, you were doing the Romance and Adventure Tour, which yes. is it's a great title for a tour, that. Thank you. Romance and Adventure. It sounds yeah. like a whirlwind somewhere I don't know where but it sounds it sounds brilliant <laughs> thank you I was actually talking to my friend about this the other day because I feel really proud of like the titles I managed to come up with I'm yeah. like that's a fucking corker and I've been trying to think of a title for the show that I'm doing tonight that I'm sort of like vaguely developing for Edinburgh and I haven't got a clue yeah. every title I come up with is shit well talk, yeah talk to us about the show tonight it's a, it's a work in progress isn't yes. it um, is what was the show about then so far what you've written I think it's sort of quite a personal show like I'm talking about my uh having had my heart broken and different relationships i've been in and also a little bit about my family and stuff like that and then there's bits about how much i love outdoorsy shit because i love outdoorsy shit and then there's a little bit about politics but yeah i so think it's going to evolve in different directions over the next few months but mm. is this the first time um, how many times have you done it before you brought it here this is the fourth time i've ever fourth done it time ever. ever yeah you it's nervous? exciting right or so nervous or excited I'm excited because it's. Um, the last time I did a stand-up tour was the end of 2012. So I had all of 2013. I did little bits and bobs, but I didn't write a full-length hour yeah. show. So for me, it's kind of like this really fun process of discovery where I'm like, oh, this is how I want to do comedy now. And like, oh, this is what I want to talk about at the moment. And like, all these things kind of unfurl that you didn't expect. Yeah, because I remember um, I remember like the last show you did here a few years ago, The Future is Another Place, if I'm correct. Uh, yeah, because I did I did another stand-up show, Remnants and Adventure, but I did it at Just The Tonic, and the last one I did here was The Future is Another Place. Yeah, yeah. and then, well, I know obviously you've been doing the Alternative Reality Tour, which is always, that was, those tours were quite uh, you know, heavy in sort of your political views and opinion. Yeah. But you know, this one's about relationships, it sounds a lot nicer. <laughs> nicer? <laughs> Not nicer, but like, <laughs> no, sounds, mate, it sounds, it's, sounds fucking, a bit. it's a show for dicks. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, I I do I guess yeah I I think I've just always try and talk about what I'm interested in mm. and just try and see what I want to talk about. And so I feel like I did three shows that were really heavily about politics in a row yeah. uh, at different times at the Edinburgh Fringe. So for that for me that meant three years of just talking about politics all the time. And since then, me and my friend have set up a charity that um, helps. Uh, Young people. Oh, good. In so arts I, was, I was going to ask about this. It's the uh, for written it down, like the Arts Emergency Service. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us a bit about that because that sounds really like brilliant. Thank you. Well, I tell you, the reason I put it up is because I feel like it's given me such a good outlet politically. Like I can do that, and I know I'm doing something. So in a way, that burden's been taken off my mind. So mm. now I feel like I want to talk about other things that I've not talked about. But I still do want to talk about politics in my show. But like, yeah. Um, Arts Emergency came about uh, from all the things that I felt when I was writing like my shows about politics the last few years so I kind of was worried that I wasn't politically active and I was worried that I I felt like a parasite in my community because I didn't feel like I was sort of giving anything back and I also kind of felt this desperation about the conservatives in power who are behaving so badly and who've changed all these things for the worse and so I was like full of all this anger and frustration but also just really really wanting to do something and I've got a friend called Neil who runs a charity now yeah. um, and we had about a year between 2010 and 2011 of just talking, trying to work out what we wanted to do, what was important to us. And to begin with, it was about fees because we, uh, I mean, the charity itself is apolitical as all charities are, but it's um, we personally as individuals despise the, the introduction of tuition fees. We think it's appalling. And also the raising of tuition fees is yeah. fucking the worst and the selling off. And we all do book. as well, trust me. Yeah, I mean, everyone does, apart from people who are profiting from it. Well, profiting from it. That's a stupid thing to say. Apart from I the know, people I, who brought it in. Yeah. Um, and it was also all the fucking people in their fifties who never had to do it, who were like, Well, I don't see why you're complaining, it's a great it's a really low interest loan. I had Fuck I, you. I had this argument with my dad like a couple of years ago. He was like, Well, I went to university for free and I was like, But it's not the point, is it? She and was like, It's alright, you have to pay, you know, get a good education. I was like, We well, don't understand. And also you free. can you do pay. You do pay via taxes throughout your whole life. You could fund by it could be funded via taxes. It is funded by via taxes in other countries very successfully. It's just a way, you know, if, if there's a system where the nine K fees, the richest kids' parents pay it, they don't even think about it, the poorest kids take take on the nine K fees and the five K living loan and have all the more debt, how is that possibly an equitable system? How is it 
it, you know, and also it discourages people. It discourages people from low income and no income and non conventional backgrounds from going to university. Because if I did, I came from like a really sort of, um, I don't know how to describe it. I came from a background with no money and not much yeah. uh, support, I suppose. Well, a lot of support in some ways, but what I'm trying to say is if it had been this much debt, it would have freaked me the fuck out. And I probably, you know, I would have still done it, but it would have, uh, you know. So, 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 so this charity is helping people to go about a different way, uh, get into arts oh, different ways or I tell you why we're there. university? We're there to say we want to keep arts, art subjects, uh, humanities subjects, BA subjects open mm. to everyone, not just people from wealthy backgrounds who have the luxury of taking them because they're going to get a good job afterwards. Yeah. It's not about, we sort of want to defend the idea that university education is not a financial transaction. It is not about what job you're going to get at the end of it. It is about three years of... Uh, expanding your intellect, developing yourself, um, all you know, s- s- learning for the love of it, and also we want to pass on this idea that study what you love, do what you love with your life. If you have an interest in arts, if you have an interest in humanities, go for it and fucking do that because you will have a better, happier, richer life. And society needs that. It's civilizing and beautiful and wonderful for a society to have individuals in it that are like that not individuals that are like well i have to study business and i fucking hated it and i fucking hate my job but where's my money or people who are like oh, i never went uni because i couldn't afford it and that's why i should have to fuck that, that. that that's the best thing i think i've heard all <laughs> year to be honest <laughs> thank you no it was my good. pleasure <laughs> and uh, let's get let's get off from politics because we got into we could i could sit here and talk all day about it but yeah. you've got a show to do um suffice to say yeah. the conservatives are cunts and if you believe otherwise you are not well enough informed and i don't necessarily mean tory voters but i mean the people making these decisions which uh, based on hyper monetization, making as much money as possible for their friends and stealing our important shit. So there you go. All, all rounds up in one nice <laughs> in a couple of sentences there. Right, last year you said you took a. Uh, we're going to talk about comedy now. We should really. Yeah. Uh, you, took, you, you said you were touring last year. Yeah. Um, because I've got it written down here. You made two short films. Didn't I, you? Well, I, in fact, I actually made those two short films in 2012. Mm. Well, they, were, they were sort of released released in 2013 yeah. yes um, let's, uh, let's Go Swimming and Romance and Venture which yeah. is the title of your See, film got the title I thought fuck it I'm getting as much mileage as possible out of it. Uh, yeah, I said it was a good title so. <laughs> exactly yeah I mean tell us a bit about those films um, so they kind of link in a little bit with the stand up I was doing in my show Romance and Adventure last year which was about this time in my life where I'd left somebody who I'd really loved but then my feelings had changed and I didn't know what to do and I felt totally lost, totally spun out mm. and it's kind of like a bit based on my real life but not quite so in the fiction of it my character has moved to Glasgow to try and start a new life and she just kind of mooches about and doesn't get anything done and assumes that she'll have it on a plate and doesn't have it and um, that's what the first film's about and the second film is about flatmates it's about these two flatmates um me my character sorry my character was Josie Doug, was it Douglas King was in there as well um, Doug King is the director as the director sorry I'm but, no no but we developed them together and we kind of did create characters that were like ciphers for us mm. so Josie my character is my cipher and Darren who's played by Doug's real life best friend Darren um, is kind of a little bit Doug's cipher a little bit uh, for kind of things we wanted to say both of us about like life or whatever and so the second one is about these two flatmates and the way we taglined it was um, Darren is Josie's best friend Josie is Darren's flatmate so basically I like I'm so happy with the friendship and I like give loads and loads and Darren's a little bit like taking me for granted and, and it's kind of about platonic friendships between male and female and how far can you trust each other and stuff like that and they're both kind of comedies but a little bit sad because mm. I, I, I have a similar problem I, I live with a girl and she stole my she stole my fruit bowl the other day oh my god I was pretty upset about that a bit furious what are you yeah. going to do about it well I had to go out and buy new fruit but it was well, it you was... didn't ask her why didn't you just ask her oh because I, I didn't I didn't want to cause a problem don't be afraid of confrontation I'm scared of confrontation I, I just was sort of until went out like this last year and now I can't get enough of it maybe if now I write like, a there's a problem here I should write a film about it maybe that'll get my yeah, you going. should the fruit bowl mm. I give it five stars <laughs> in advance I oh, cheers. <laughs> Endorsed by Josie Long. Yes. <laughs> right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna round off in a minute because okay. I'm very aware you've got to go on stage soon. I, I want to get you into work. And I'm badly shall. prepared. You should be pleased to know. Yeah. So just before we go, I remember mm. I saw a video of you a couple of years ago, a UK uncut demonstration mm. abs- uh, on Westminster Bridge, mm. I believe. Uh, shot from beneath, always the yeah. most flattering angle to be shot from. Well, I remember I, I saw, <coughs> uh, at one point you said, uh, I think I wrote it down. Um, you said David Cameron thinks lef- lefties have no sense of humour. Yes. 
and if he thinks that, he should come round to your house and see any picture of him in a newspaper because you've drawn a giant spunking cock. <laughs> yes, that it. is what I said. Now, um, <laughs> just because just because <laughs> I wanted so to be so proud of myself. <laughs> well, we're about to go a bit prouder because just before just before we start today, me and Josie, we both got a picture of David Cameron that I brought him. Can I say I kept mine PG and I really took a realistic theme? Oh, you did. No, no, but I'm very excited to see yours. Oh, I just went all out. Crew. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. Right, ready? Yeah. Let's reveal so, it to each other. I've given him the cold dead eyes of a maniac okay. and a monocle. And then I've written horrible pitiless cunt 2010 to 2015. And then I've written your stuff belongs to me and my mates. Bad luck, povos. And I've also written wank on his tie. Oh, see, I, that's brilliant. I've done I'm it. 31 years old. Well, I, I can get away with this. I'm, I'm 20 and I, I didn't <laughs> have much time. So my pen broke. So in about a minute, I had to just draw a little uh, double oh, moustache with yeah. a little sort of goatee. And then goatee, yeah. John's oh, spunking the penis. The is like falling out of his mouth. Yep, and he's got a tongue coming out. And then just, just, just for the hell of it, I am a top. twat on top. Can I say I think you've done some beautiful work here. Thank you. Would you like to? I mean, you can keep it. If you, if you, <laughs> want, you can have keep this. Like. This is this is. I hope you take that I'll put on, it on, on top with you and <laughs> keep it as a mentor for this thing. I will. I will. I shall treasure it always. Lovely. Thank you very much, Josie. Oh, thanks for having me. No, best of luck with the show. I need it. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs>